Today we're going to talk about uncomfortable signs that you're actually emotionally healing. Now I know I've been in the healing field for 26 years and a lot of people talk about, oh, you should go see a healer. It's so great. And people imply that healing is easy and fun and it's not always. However, when you get to the other side, there's such deep fulfillment. You get yourself in better situations, you open up better opportunities, you have better friendships and better relationships, and you deserve it. So we're gonna talk about three signs to know that you're almost on the other side, right? Because normally when people get uncomfortable, that means they're 80% through the healing process and that you're almost right there. So stick with it. And first, we're gonna run the show reel. <laughs> you can't be able to watch. You deserve healing. Write down in the comments below, I deserve healing. Manifest it, say it to the universe, remind yourself. You deserve it, I deserve it. Write it in the comments below. The first thing that I notice with people when they're almost through their healing process is they start accepting that they've been through difficulty. One of the challenges I see is people start comparing their difficulty with other people's difficulty. Like, yeah, I lost my job, but at least I didn't lose my house. Or I don't have it as bad as so-and-so. And they almost invalidate the experience that they've gone through in their own challenges and in their own life challenges. So I'm gonna encourage you not to compare your challenges with others. Because based upon our age, our resources, our vulnerability in the moment when something happens, and other life complications, even things that seem little can have a life-changing impact on us that can really shift our emotional state. And the really interesting thing is we can't feel emotion and use our logical brain at the same time. So when we're in a highly emotional state, we can't just logic our way out of it. In other words, what happens is sometimes we suppress our emotions instead. We spiritual bypass them. We ignore them. And then when we start suppressing our emotions, it actually creates physical pathology, physical changes in our body. Have you ever thought about a situation that's happened in the past and felt sick to your stomach or felt tension in your shoulders or got angry or got upset? So this is why it's so important to accept that you've been through difficulties, to acknowledge the emotions that are coming through and start using supportive systems, whether it be journaling for yourself, doing healing work with yourself. But most often people find that they get the most healing results when they're doing work that accesses their unconscious mind as well and changes their nervous system, something like emotional freedom techniques or tapping, um, EMDR, somato emotional body work, um, hypnotherapy, right? Gestalt therapy. So whether you're choosing to do psychotherapy, counseling, or something, look for something that incorporates the mind and the body and then actually shifts the unconscious mind or the nervous system pattern as well. And you will see that you have even easier, better results because we're actually changing the neurology instead of just ha being aware of what happened to us and how it's impacting us. And secondly, allow yourself to feel the emotions. Often when we go through something that's challenging, we need to get through our lives, right? Like as humans are like, oh, I've got work to do. I've got things happening. I've got fun things coming up. And we start closing our heart to protect ourselves. Or we start ignoring our emotions. Oh, I shouldn't still feel, be feeling grief over that breakup. Or I shouldn't still feel grief over that death in the family or the loss of a job. Or I shouldn't be afraid. And when we should and push down our emotions, what can happen is it can create our nervous system and our unconscious mind to start pushing the emotions up even faster and harder. So we start experiencing either a lack of, right? Like we go into a hypo or a lesser state, like depression, like an inability to move, apathy, I don't care anymore, or the opposite, something that's hyperactive, like feelings of anxiousness, anxiety, um, hypervigilance, where we start like, oh, what's gonna happen next? I know something's gonna happen next, right? So instead of doing that, now what you get to do instead is allow yourself to feel emotion. 
Remember, emotion is energy in motion. So when we witness, we acknowledge, we allow ourselves to feel it and move through it. Then we not only can feel that negative, but it also opens us up to feel the positive. And as you're on your healing journey, as you start healing those situations, healing yourself, getting support, what you'll notice is that your hires will become more high and more frequent and the lows will become less intense. They'll become less frequent. They'll become easier to manage. And the other lovely thing about healing is you actually get to start enforcing your boundaries because when we're feeling our emotions, when we're aware of what's going on in our body, when we become aware of our triggers, then when something else comes up, even something as simple as where do you want to go to dinner? Or hey, do you want to go to this concert? Or um, will you babysit my children for me this weekend? We can actually enforce boundaries. How do we get to be spoken to? How much sleep do we need? What do we want to eat? We can state our opinions and our emotions because we have clarity around the situations. We're not just reacting. We're not triggered by the past. We're actually here in the present, observing ourselves and our body reactions and our emotional reactions. And we can actually make decisions based upon what's right for us. Because when we do our work like tapping or get hypnotherapy or do gestalt therapy or journaling or any of the tons of modalities that are out there that provide true deep healing, we get a deeper understanding of ourselves, our wants, our needs, our desires. And then not only can we create boundaries that are healthy for us, but we can enforce them in a way that's positive and supportive for everyone involved, instead of just blowing up at people, shutting down and turning off. And as kind of a bonus, I want you to remember, healing's not linear. We go through waves and that's okay. In fact, it's encouraged. It means that you're moving through something. In fact, I like to tell my clients that situations and healing almost happens in a spiral. So first you start out kind of circling the situation, circling all the emotions, this happened, that happened, all the minor, all the details. And then as you heal, you get less and less triggered or the situation comes up less and less often. It's less and less intense. The emotions are more neutral. We have calmness, clarity, choice, and confidence. And we can clean up the little bits of emotion or the little bits when the old situations, when the old difficulties arise, no matter how challenging they were at the time. And remember, you don't have to actually relive your trauma to heal trauma when you're with the right professional. In fact, really good professionals will often keep you more distanced and help you use other therapies such as EMDR to help neutralize emotions instead of reliving the trauma. So know that that's possible. And as you explore healers, therapists, counselors to help you, look for that. Ask them, how do you work with trauma? How do you work with situations? What kind of results can I expect? because this is your healing journey. And in my belief, it should be as gentle and simple and easy as possible. So remember, you are loved, you're loving, and you're lovable. Namaste. And subscribe. <laughs>